Hello. Hello. So glad you could uh, join me for our look as we continue to uh, trek through the Psalms during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as many of you know who are watching this, we are back in, in person uh, on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, we are meeting in person, but still uh, only half capacity, uh, if that. Uh, actually, probably more around 40%, 35 to 40% capacity once we, because we are trying our best to adhere to the social distancing guidelines. Uh, it is, it is a, a very wet and rainy Sunday morning on J July the 12th uh, here in the Green Hill community. Uh, we had about 100 people uh, in person this morning and several uh, who were watching uh, due to uh, either not being able to uh, be here for because of the concerns of this wonder, this uh, deadly, horrible virus that is going around. And then we also had some that uh, weren't able to get out because of the, the, the rain. Uh, when I say if you're not uh, from Green Hill or you weren't in Green Hill this morning, uh, on Sunday, July 12th, and uh, when I say it rained, it rained. Uh, very, very good rain. It was nothing like the flood, thankfully, uh, but uh, it was definitely a good soaking uh, hard rain. And so I, I'm thinking it's pretty much looking like, as I look out the window up here at the office, it looks like it's trying to lighten up a little bit, and hopefully we'll have a good afternoon. Uh, but uh, as you're watching this, you may be on Facebook watching us or even YouTube, uh, but we want you to uh, watch uh, our different classes uh, online. Uh, if you are watching on Facebook or maybe you're watching on Facebook but know someone who doesn't have access to Facebook but they do have access to the internet and YouTube, uh, you can simply go to our uh, website, shilohchurchofchrist.net. You'll see a, a, a link there to our YouTube page, and you can go and scroll and watch all these, uh, our past live stream services, our Bible classes, and, and also watch uh, many of our youth classes that Wes is doing just a wonderful job on. Uh, he has a, a class for the cradle roll. Uh, that is uh, pretty much uh, from infant up until about uh, three, four years old. Uh, and even some a little older still enjoy it. Uh, it would be nice to watch that whether you're you're four, forty, or or, or, or eighty. Uh, you would you would I think would enjoy that. We have several of the uh, teens uh, that are helping out with that, and we are so grateful for them uh, to help out. Wes is just doing a wonderful job with them, getting them incorporated uh, in in the work of the church and helping out the little ones. Then he also has a class, a virtual classroom uh, for the, the K-5 uh, cl uh, area. Uh, in other words, from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. And I know the kids are loving that. Wes is doing a great job on that. Then also, he posts a, a video for uh, a long online Bible study for the teens. And uh, I am way, way past my teen years. But uh, I can still watch that and, and glean a lot from that. Uh, so, so go back and watch. I think he's got all three of those uploaded already uh, as you're watching this to our Facebook and our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, but if for some reason the, the weather delayed that, just keep checking back in and uh, watch that. You'll, you'll enjoy it. You really will. Wes is doing a, a wonderful job uh, under these horrible circumstances. Uh, I know it's killing him not to be able to uh, be with the teens and be with the little ones. Uh, and do different things uh, with them, but uh, he's he's ready to make up for it once this horrible virus gets behind us. Um, I, I am myself personally uh, looking forward to the the chance to be able to teach Bible classes again in person, and uh, Lord willing, whenever we are able to meet, and and our our elders are very wise and are doing a wonderful job as far as. Uh, keeping the con their 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 focus number one on the Lord and making sure the word is getting out and the word is being taught truthfully, uh, but also as they shepherd us, uh, they are not only shepherding our spiritual side but also shepherding our physical side, uh, and so they are doing a wonderful job. And once uh, they deem that it is okay for us to meet in person again on Sunday mornings, as far as Bible class, we're already meeting in person on, on Sunday mornings for worship. Uh, we will start a look on Sunday mornings at the book of Acts 
and then on Wednesday nights, once it is, uh, we are able to deem, they deem that it's able, we're able to and safe to meet again on Wednesday nights uh, in person, we will start a Bible class on the book of Job. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, for the future. It may be a month, it may be six months. Uh, right now, it's not looking very promising uh, due to this virus, uh, the this, this, this spiking in cases. Uh, I know many people are wanting to go on vacation, uh, and they're not able to. Our vacation is actually uh, up in the air right now. Uh, as we, we keep seeing the, the cases rise, uh, we are possibly even canceling our vacation uh, due to this. Uh, but continue to pray for everyone. Uh, we have several in our community. I'm pretty sure if you're watching us and you're not from Green Hill, uh, you, you probably know someone or heard of someone or have someone in the community you live in that is dealing with this whether you know their name or not just pray uh, that the lord will will be with us as uh, we continue to try to get through this pandemic the lord will will bless the doctors and nurses uh, the scientists that are trying to come up with vaccines and then uh, even the lord through through his providence and through nature uh, may will will just go ahead and vanish this uh, disease or at least get us to where we're immune to it, where it's not as deadly as it is. Uh, so continue to remember that in prayer. Uh, I, I think I went too long already uh, on the opening remarks. So let's just go ahead and dive in now as we're looking at Psalm chapter 9. So go ahead and, and, and break out your Bibles or follow along uh, with the screen here. Psalm chapter 9 is a, a psalm of thanksgiving. It's a prayer of thanksgiving. It is written by David. And and here in, in verse 1, the Bible says uh, to the chief musician, uh, obviously this is not the this part here is not uh, inspiration. This is just something that man put in there to the chief musician uh, to the tune of of death to the of the sun, a psalm of David. That right that part right there was put in by man. It is not inspired, uh, but the next part is inspired. This is where Psalm chapter one or Psalm chapter nine in verse one starts. David says, "I will praise you, O Lord." With my whole heart, I will tell you of your marvelous works. So here, David says it's uh, in, in, impossible, pretty much we, we understand, it's impossible to please God correctly uh, without our whole heart. He says, I, my whole heart, I'm going to praise you, Lord. Um, we can't praise God half-heartedly and do it correctly. Many people try to. Many people try to keep one foot in the world and, and one foot in God and, and try to... To please God, but folks, that can't be. We've got to have our whole heart uh, ready to praise God to truly please Him. David continues on, and in verse 2, he says, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name to the Most High. We need to understand when we are our, our, our praising God, when we are worshiping God, I can't have a sour attitude. Many people today will will have a sour attitude when it comes to God. They, they come in uh, to the building when, when it's time to have corporate worship, if you will, on, on Sundays. And, and many people will come in and bless their hearts. They, they look like they've been winged on pickle juice. They have this sour look on their face. They come in, they sit down, and what is the first thing they do? They just sit down, they hunker down, and, and they, they look all mad. Mm, they don't want to be there. And, and that's their look. And, and, I've, and I've known people like this. You've probably known people like this. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if God is, is up in heaven looking at, down at us going, oh, I wish they wouldn't worship me. Oh. No, he's not. I know he's not. He wants to be worshipped, but he wants us to rejoice, be happy that we get to worship him. You know, if I don't want to worship God while I'm here on earth, folks, I'm not going to like heaven. Probably ain't going to matter. Probably not going to make it there myself. Any, anyway, if I if, if that's my attitude where I don't want to worship God here on earth, if that's my attitude, I probably won't even have to worry about getting to heaven. Uh, but do you know in heaven that's what we're going to do? The book of Revelation tells us that we will we'll, we'll be praising him uh, all worshiping him all the time. That's what we're going to be doing in heaven. We're going to be worshiping God. So if I don't like to do it here on earth, 
I'm not going to like to do it in heaven, but don't worry. If my attitude is sour, I'm not rejoicing when I sing his praises on high, as David says here. I'm probably not going to have to worry about making it to heaven. So uh, we need to make sure that, that we will will praise him, sing praises to him. And I think it's very, very fitting that, that David says that, uh, that we are to sing praises to him. In other words, David's, we understand David is, is in the Old Testament and God overlooked uh, many things that they did in the Old Testament. But here, David says, I will sing praise to your name. Kind of reminds me of a verse in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 3, uh, where the Hebrew writer says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. We're praising God by the fruit of our lips. We're, we're, we're not banging on some drum or, 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 or piano keys or, or picking a guitar. We're, we're praising God with our lips. And that's what we are to do. Then David says in verse 3, he, he says, when my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. In other words, when they, when the the enemies uh, turn back again, when they when they turn back uh, again to attack him, he says they'll perish, uh, they'll fall and perish at your presence. Verse four: For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne, judging in righteousness. God maintains uh, the right and the cause of the righteous. That's what God does. Uh, if we're right with him and our cause is God's cause, in other words, to, to live a Christian life and to tell it to others, then, then God it maintains that right. Uh, we'll always be able to do that. The law may not allow us to. The, the physical law in, in our country, it may not allow us to, but we do it anyway. You know, think about China. China is a, a communist country that uh, does not allow freedom of religion like we have it here in America. And, and in China, it is illegal to own a Bible. So what do many missionaries uh, do to get the hands of, uh, of the or get the Bible rather in the hands of the people in China, they they send them over there on planes, knowing that the Chinese government is going to confiscate them. But what's the Chinese government turn around to do? Chinese government turns around and makes money off of them on the black market. So in turn, uh, the Bibles are still getting into the hands uh, of the Chinese. Those that live in China, uh, even though it's a communist country, doesn't allow it. Uh, they're still getting into the hands of the people. There in China, uh, so so God, we can always find a way to spread the 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 cause of Christ. Then he says in verse five, David says, "You have rebuked the nations, you have destroyed the wicked, you have blotted out their names forever and ever." You know, you think about the wicked countries that are. Uh, that are out there, that have been out there. Um, where is Edom now? Ah, uh, have, have you ever met an Edomite, Ed, Edomite in person? Yeah, me either. Why? Because God's blotted them out. God has blotted them out. Uh, what about the, the Babylonians? I haven't met anybody from Babylon. Why? Because Babylon's not a nation anymore. Uh, Babylon is, was actually where Iraq is now. Uh, so, so I haven't met any Babylonians anymore. Uh, they're not because they don't exist. God blots the wicked completely out. Uh, we need to be careful in our country, not to get too political here. But if we're not careful, God will blot out America. Uh, we'll, we'll, the, the country may still be here, but it won't be named known as the United States of America if we don't keep God in the forefront uh, of, of our minds. And we need to make sure we continue to be a nation. And we'll talk about that uh, here in just a little bit as we get toward the end of the chapter. But let's continue on. We need to continue to be a nation uh, under God. Verse 6. The Bible says, O enemy, destructions are finished forever. 
you have destroyed cities. Even their memory has perished. He says in verse 7, But the Lord shall endure, for your, endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. We have to remember that the wicked will be forgotten. But God will never be forgotten. God will never be forgotten at all. Uh, even though the wicked men will be from time to time. Then in verse 8, he says, He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall administer judgment for the peoples in uprightness. God and his people always win. Wicked people always lose. They may not lose here on earth, but they will lose um, on the day of judgment. God's always going to judge the world in righteousness. That word righteousness means what's right with him. Not what's right with me, but what's right with God. And so I need to, to learn from the Bible what's right with God. I can't go by my own feelings. You know, uh, Jeremiah would say in Jeremiah chapter 10 around verse 23, it's not in man that walks to direct his steps. I can't go by my feelings. I can't go by what I want uh, to please God. I have to go by what God wants to please him. And so that's what we need to do. God's going to judge the world in righteousness. Verse 9 and I have this, this verse highlighted in my Bible. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. That is such a, a very comforting verse. However, sometimes I think we take that to the extreme and that's the only time we rely on God is when we're in trouble. We don't think about uh, talking to God, praying to God when we're not in trouble. The only time we, we, we talk to him, we call on him, if you will, is uh, when we're in trouble. We treat him like a butler. Uh, we want him when we need him, but when we don't need him, we don't want him around. God, I, I need you. I'm, I'm in the hospital, and so therefore I need you now. God, I'm at the bar. I'm at the club. I don't need you now. You just you just get on back where you came from. Let me have my fun. That's how many people treat God. But uh, he is definitely a refuge for the oppressed. But that's not the only time we need to, to think about God. That's not the only time we need to reach out to God. Well, look at verse 10. He says, And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Uh, although though many may turn their back on God, God will never turn his back on us. Verse 11, Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. Remember, our purpose for singing, our purpose for songs is to praise God, not to entertain us. It's to praise God. And that's what we need to do. Verse 12. He says, when he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. God protects the oppressed. He protects the humble. You know, in, in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, the Bible says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. For be, be content with such things you have. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That right there is telling me that, that God is going to protect the humble. He is going to be there for those who are, are humble. And he will protect us. Verse 13, David says, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. You who lift me up at the, of the, uh, from the gates of death. Why does David, here he is talking about how bad all these other people are, and then he turns around and says, You have mercy on me. Don't give me what I deserve, God. Be merciful to me. Why? Because none of us are perfect. 
We all need to, to beg for the mercy of God. We don't need the judgment that is truly due. We need him to delay that judgment due. We need to throw our ha- our, ourselves to the mercy of God. You know how people say, I throw myself on the mercy of the court. Don't give me what I deserve. Give me something lighter. That's what we want God to do. We don't want God to give us what we deserve. Verse 14, he says, Have mercy on me, verse 13, why? That I may tell of your praise in the gates of the daughters of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. That's our duty to tell others about God. Look at verse 15 as we're getting close to the end. He says, the nations have sunk down in the pit which they have made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. You know, when when nations... Uh, pull away from God. Sometimes they set traps that they fall into themselves. Um, I, I remember a man named Haman, uh, Esther chapter 5. He made some gallows uh, to hang a man named Mordecai. And uh, as he is trying to set this trap for Mordecai, for uh, Mordecai to be hung from those gallows that he made for him, uh, he ends up Haman does, displeasing Esther, which turns and displeases the king. And guess who is hung on his own gallows? That is Haman. That is correct. Haman is hung on his own gallows. So uh, we need to make sure that we're not a nation that's setting a trap for for uh, something that we fall into. He says in, in verse 16, he says, The Lord know is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. God is known by, by his judgment. Yeah, think back uh, to, to Joshua chapter 2. Guess who, who had heard of God because of how he, he treated the other nations, because of the judgment, rather, that God executed on the, the heathen nations, these, these horrible, horrible nations that did not follow him. A lady named Rahab. Remember, as, as she was going, she pleased, or rather hid the spies. The Bible says in, in Joshua chapter 2, uh, as uh, the, the spies are getting ready to leave, uh, she, this is what Rahab says. Rahab says, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, who were on the other side of the Jordan, Shion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. The the reason that she helped the spies is she knew that these guys were Israelites and they had God on their side. And she says, I've heard of what God does to people who, who cross you guys. I don't want to be a part of it. God is known through his judgments, David says. Verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. In other words, they should suffer and die. This is a key verse here. The wicked shall be turned to hell and all the nations that forget God. The nations that forget God will die. They will die out. You know, the psalmist would say, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We need to make sure that that we get back, as I've said before, uh, our uh, Pledge of Allegiance says that we are one nation under God. We have sometimes, I see us being trying to be a nation that's over God. We don't want to be one nation under God. We want to be na- one nation over God. But we need to get back to being a nation under God. And I think we're headed in that direction. Uh, we get sidetracked sometimes. But I think the, the core of this country wants to get back to being one nation truly that's under God. We are under his authority. And we are looking to him to see how we need to act. That's what we need to be. Verse 
18, just a couple of more verses and we're done. He says, For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. You know, there is some that will perish forever, and that's the, the wicked man. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 7, When the wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of the unjust perishes. But not of the righteous, not of the poor, not of the needy, those who are really looking for God, they are not going to perish. They may perish here on earth, but they will not perish in the afterlife, in the continued life rather, uh, the, the eternal life. They will not perish there if they have turned to God and are, are doing what God wants them to do. Let's finish up the last two verses very quickly. They go together. He says as he finishes this, this thanksgiving uh, uh, of God's righteous judgment, he finishes it with praise. And he says, Arise, O Lord, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Well, we need to realize that we are just men. God is God, and we are just men. Therefore, we need to, to continue to praise Him. Remember, that was a, a, a lesson that Nebuchadnezzar had to find out in Daniel chapter 4, that he was simply a man and God was God. Uh, we need to quit trying to make God like us. We need to try to quit trying to make God beneath us. Uh, we need to quit trying to make our, ourselves God. We are not God. God is God. We are just mere men. I hope you really have, have enjoyed uh, this study uh, of Psalm chapter 9, Lord willing. I know it took a little bit longer than normal, but Lord willing, we'll dive into Psalm chapter 10 next week. If you have any comments, questions, please leave them uh, or, or contact me directly. Uh, my number is on the bulletin. It's on, the, uh, in, uh, on our website. I'll be more than happy to, to study and discuss things uh, with you from this psalm. Thank you again for joining us, and remember to give God all the glory. Good afternoon.